Hello and welcome to Hardware Learning. Today we are t installing the integrated engineering turbo inlet on the RS3. That puppy's got to stuff itself back there. We're going to show you how to do it. So we heard the clunking on the front of the car. Getting passed by the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> We will need some triple squares, Torx, ratchet, wrenches, flathead screwdriver, socket, Allen's, wow, 8mm, 4mm, 6mm, number 10 triple square, T20, T25, T30, T45, 10mm socket, ratchet, wrench, flathead screwdriver. A Dremel with a cutoff wheel, that'll be to get this security screw off towards the end of the install. First things first, you take the little plastic guard off. You know, that's just pop that guy off and pull all the like friction fit. Then we want to take off our inlet pipe. So that's this guy and this guy pop right out of our way. Should buy. What do you, which one do you think? I mean, this one's gonna have to come on. Yeah. And I was like, God damn it. I'm done with that. Should we put tape over that turbo in there? So we don't drop anything in there? Very good. Outlet. To like put bolts in? Yeah. A little loud. Yeah, the one closest to the... So in order to get these coil pack harnesses, it's real easy. So you just pull back, it snaps. Nice audible click. Doesn't physically move very much. And then you just gotta gently wiggle her back and forth until what was that? Rock sensor or whatever it is will have to so be. After that, disconnect front sensor clip loaded located next to the oil fill neck. That's this guy. Let me in the... Ooh. So that red piece just slides back, frees it up. Oh. Okay, that's out. Now we push back that harness bracket to access the number one and number two coils. So we're gonna pull these coils. <clears throat> oh yeah. New like high performance plugs. <clears throat> what? Remove these take ground harnesses. Well. Jesus. Fucking air show going on. I'm gonna pull that plug. And then also, <coughs> we undid a 10 millimeter nut off here so that this ground is free. Move that aside. I think we're gonna attack the PCV in a second here. So now we're gonna attack the PCV valve, which has three Torx bits. One, two, three, move that guy, and then I'm sure we'll get the one over there. T20 Torx. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. Three of them. Just to be safe, we put a little tape over the coil pack holes where the spark plugs are, just so we don't have to go fishing for nuts or anything if we drop them down there. It's kind of just the perfect type for you, isn't it? Pull. Remove the wastegate hard line mount bolt from the factory turbo inlet pipe using a T30. Once removed, disconnect the line from the wastegate canister and carefully set aside. Right down here. How are we gonna do that? Would it make sense to come from the bottom? If this shield is in the way, then we're gonna have to remove heat shields from the bottom if we try and come from the bottom. We need a short T30 is what we need to get in there. So the wastegate line is this guy, and there's a bracket on the turbo inlet somewhere around here. Believe me on that one. So the wastegate harness, it's really kind of in a tight area, so we put a T30 on this adapter thing, and we're hoping that that gives us enough shallow clearance to get it off. Is that gonna work? I think so. I can just line it up. I got her. I 
check if that's enough clearance to pull it out maybe. Now we got the bracket off the wastegate line. We're trying to get it off the canister carefully without tearing that hose. Is it sliding off now? Yeah. So there you have it. I believe we go under the car now. So you want to get the, the belly pan off, which we did last night when we installed the lip. So we are one step ahead of ourselves. Using a flathead, your next step is to remove this hose clamp from the intercooler piping. Is the goal just to take this tube off? Yeah, I think so. Next step is the I have a good angle at it passenger right heat shield. From the driver's side, it's right in here about. Let's move your hand real quick. Yeah, that one should be loose. Oh, yeah. The other one I haven't gotten to yet. So we've got our heat shield here. There's an eight millimeter there and there. Pop that down. Come out the way your arm comes. And you're golden. So we were able to get it loose with the triple square bit that we have that's a little long. So now, once you get it loose and just out of the recess here enough, and get it with your finger and loosen it up from finger tight. So now we have that off. It's two clamps on the silicone hose between the charge pipe here and inlet on the top end. Is it at loose, at least loose where you could like pull on that tube now? <laughs> Looks like it should be, but it is not. If these are oriented from the factory down a little more, life would be so much easier. Enough. Is the charge pipe loose or is there one more bracket? There's a bracket down here. So in order to get the bracket off for the bottom of the charge pipe, we remove the clamp for the inlet, the hot side for the intercooler, and there's a belt, which I don't think is showing up real well on video here, but uh, we're on the top side of the belt with T30. This charge pipe's not going to... I think this single bolt is a lot easier to take off, or relatively easier, versus the two bolts, because the bottom of this oil pan... The only thing holding this together now should be rubber up there. So in order to get this charge pipe out, it was easy if we had someone pull this open. We loosened the top worm coupler thing, pull it straight down from here. So the coupler comes with it. We wanted to get this one loose and it was easier to kind of twist this and it comes off the charge side of the turbo. So we are down in the passenger front wheel well. We're coming up by the where the charge pipe was and we want to get this T30 bolt off the, this lower T30 bolt off the turbo inlet. So we're going to reach up through here with a socket and get that baby off. Got the uh, inlet off. Charge pipe had to come out to get at the inlet bolts. Danny boy's cutting this, uh, fitting to cut this uh, security bolt off here. Put a flat spot on it so that you can get a flat head on there to remove that. So, finally getting this off. It was really cinched on there, so you might want to get a really good cut on your screw head in order to get in and get this PCB out. We were able to finally get it to snap and uh, wiggle her out. So now we'll transplant that to the new inlet. Hey, Let's compare the size here. And this profile looks almost the same, but if you look from here, there's a little less uh, weird shapes going on. So I don't know if uh, this was just a packaging slip, but this hex that they provided us is too small for the threads on the PCV and it wouldn't get tight. So we went and bought a M6 threaded bolt to get our PCV on there and we're ready to install. Oh, one other thing to mention, this black gasket you need to reuse from the old uh, inlet and you want it when you install the inlet back onto the turbo you want to make sure that doesn't slip off it looks like it actually has a little shoulder on there to retain it so we'll slip that back on we'll get this car back boosting down the road and we will see you next time